Fox created. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. Big up Tanya. Oh, we Tanya. literally yeah. joined. UMC. We yes, literally yes, joined UMC. UMC yeah. um, what? Three months before lockdown. Well, uh, we were in talks with her, and then basically her new website launched. I think February. 2020. 2020. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, then lockdown, lockdown came a month yeah. later. Yeah, yeah. So, so it kind of really messed everything up, obviously, for everyone. But, but do you know what? Yeah, that, that moment became very golden for us because we joined the UMC WhatsApp group, innit? Yeah. Well, it wasn't just that. It was even though that had just happened yeah. and then lockdown hit a month later, Tanya was fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know, she literally, like, we still managed to get work done and get, and yeah, yeah, get yeah. work. She's you know, awesome. she was big fantastic. Yeah, big yeah. up Tanya, man. Yeah. You know, um, we had, like, we did some school workshops. We did flipping, um, like, we've done some talks and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, like, uh, not, not workshops, what were they? That thing we did up at Thames Daughter. Oh. Um, um, I suppose they are like workshops, like yeah, online, online workshops. Online workshops, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, and we, we, did, we did quite a few things. She still managed to sort of get us work and stuff through that lockdown yeah, period. Yeah. And I think that, also contributed, you know, yeah. because we were still we were still active, yeah. not just online, but actually we were still able to do things in person and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So it was good. Yeah. It's really cool. Um, okay, so I'm going to go a little deeper now. So, what's the day to day runnings of of you guys in this <laughs> fully functioning operational? power station that, that, that you created within the label and also there's going out every weekend and having to uh, manage you know sleeping patterns and yeah. you know, day to day life what's the what's the what's the process of Monday to Friday well one thing I will just start off with I'll let you take this but we are two of the most disorganised people you'll ever be <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say that from the offset that's the caveat coming. it's yeah. the caveat for us right now like we're super organised yeah. and we know exactly what we're doing no, <laughs> no. Yeah, don't think for a minute any of us know what the fuck we're doing. Yeah, we're, literally. We're just winging very it. good at fumbling, yeah, fumbling our way through. Pretty much. But to be fair, like, so Dees is very, he is banged. To be honest, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be where we are now. I can't even, you know, I'm not going to say I can't take any credit because we are a duo. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. when it comes to actually getting us out there and actually putting, like, marketing us, mm. he is the man. He oh, is the man, yeah, yeah. believe Superstar. me. Superstar, she's Thank sweet. you. But day to day, do you know what? We've got three animals. We've got two dogs and a cat. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And, um, well, well, what, what, two dogs and cat, three animals, two dogs and cat. I could just check in. Yeah. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> Not three animals and two yeah, dogs. Yeah, I was just about to say. <laughs> my, my numeric dyslexia suddenly just. <laughs> dyslex dyslexicometer went fucking haywire then. <laughs> yeah, so we've got um, two dogs and a cat. We've got um, a son, like my son, Amber's stepson, uh, Stars' stepson. <coughs> um, so, you know, we've got a busy household if you like yeah. a regular normal kind of household yeah. um the dogs the cat they so funny like the cat is actually really easy like he just mm. wants to eat and he goes out about his day but the two dogs they're, they're the type of dogs they sit there looking at you waiting C can you feed me now can you walk me now can you strike me <laughs> can now can you pet me yeah <laughs> I am and, a uh, we love them we love them of course but you know it's just sometimes they're, 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 there's them times especially as creative people i'm sure you know the deal sometimes you just want to say do you know what? i don't want to do any of my responsibilities <laughs> do right? any of yeah. those things i just want to be able to sit down and just maybe just be creative yeah uh, but yeah. life gets in the way sometimes it yeah. stops that happening doesn't it so yeah. it is quite a so day-to-day -day of our sort of like careers and stuff it's quite a lot of Full speed ahead, sprint, 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 right, 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 record, 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 and then we'll have like a week off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, at least you're getting a week off. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. I say a week off, it's a week off from writing. Yeah. Then we've got bookings oh, and radio and stuff mm. all in between. Mm. Where do you find the bits in between and how do you uh, come up with the bars, how do you come up with the songs? It just yeah. happens, it just to happens, be honest. Yeah. Like, yeah. It doesn't feel times... creative, it's just a process. Yeah, just kind of, well, it's like, so like, um, recently I've been banging to grime, or we've been bang, listening to loads of grime, mm -hmm. and um, recently there's we've come across just a few tunes, and they're not even new tunes, they're just dirty grime tunes, yeah. and bars are just coming, like, mm. coming, 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 and mm. it's not even necessarily that we're writing for that tune, it's just that tune has given me the inspiration for a whole heap of bars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it just comes out. And mm -hmm. then those bars, they'll sit in the they'll sit in the arsenal for however long until mm -hmm. we find that beat and I'll be like, bang, that bar goes on that beat. Let's do it. And then, oh, then God, that will good. turn into a tune. Do you know what I mean? But you know, we got we got a friend, uh, Man Like Reds. Yes, Shout they out, are Man Reds. Like Reds. And he is just walking, talking, um, lyric factory, inspiration. Yeah, he's, he's, he's just he he's he's got everything there, yeah. And yeah. um He's a good friend of ours, and there's been quite a few projects we've been sitting on for a while, 
been unsure which direction to take. Some of them weren't even started yet, but yeah. we knew we, we were going to use them. We want the beat. And then right. sometimes we've just had him in the studio for the evening and we're playing, playing through some things. And he's like, yeah, I got one for this. Yeah. So, for example, um, one of our releases in a minute. Mm. And um, basically, so this is quite a common factor with some of our releases. Um, one simple word can inspire the whole tune. Yeah. So yeah. that tune in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, he actually had, a, had a, a verse and basically he says in a minute yeah. throughout it. Um, we were like, okay, lay that down. We'll do the whole track called In A Minute. Yeah, and then just that everything in the nice. track is, the theme is In A Minute, you know, I'll yeah. be there in a minute. Um, yeah, it and works. the whole tune yeah. was born. And that that's a similar thing. We've done some of our own ones like that. Um, mm. We had a jazzy man, grime instrument. Big up jazzy man. Yeah, and uh, stars in it. One of the sort of sounds in the track, it sounded like check, the mm. word check. Mm. And stars clocked that and she was like, let's call it check then the whole we're really good at sort of theming mm, songs yeah. and when we theme we're good songs at yeah yeah, yeah we we go in with it yeah so. but, but okay so in the in the context of like doing a radio a pirate radio station with pyro or anywhere um your your bar and off uh, could be best part of 40 minutes mm. maybe yeah. longer yeah give or take um there's expectations from the dj there's expectations from each one of you Mm. to make sure that you're delivering the best mm. uh, how do you remember all these all these bars well sometimes writing them for 14 years <laughs> <laughs> and also just writing them for 14 years sometimes we don't we are humans yeah. you know and sometimes we forget even at the best yeah. of times but um, we've made some mistakes in the past where we've tried to do like specials on pyro we did a, a birthday special for me and a Christmas one. Oh, and yeah. And we did, like, four sets, like, or three sets. So, literally, we've got three hours I up there. I think the Christmas one was the four-hour one, and that was yeah. just... Yeah, and we had a load of guests come through, Brocky <laughs> and Shady and Herbsy. Sick. Which was sick, but then by, like, the second... After the second hour, we're like... Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. We were regretting that, man. Yeah. Melting. It seemed yeah. like a good idea at the time. Like a and, snowman. Yeah, and as you say, there is there's some expectations. So, we want to be able to give our best performance keep the lyrics fresh or at least use different lyrics on different sets and yeah. all of that. But yeah, when, when you roll out three sets back to back to back, yeah, yeah. it does get a bit much. Yeah. So we stopped doing that now. We just sort of stick to the hour long shows and try to give the, keep the best content, keep it fresh. And uh, also we also really try to showcase the guests. Yeah. You know, it's, we, we've never been like, right, well you're coming on our show. So we're going to do our thing and you're going to mm. be part yeah. of that. Mm. Yeah. It's like, no, no, we're, we're bringing you on the show and we want you to, do your thing in it yeah. yeah we want people that because we bring people on that we know are sick as well yeah. mm. so it's like look we want other people to if they don't already know about you we want them to see how sick you are and we're gonna uh, um yeah. compliment that mm -hmm. well one of the things we've always prided ourselves on and it's something that i you know i don't have an issue with it at all mm. but it's something that i've noticed is becoming very common especially in the drum and bass scene um and one thing we've always prided ourselves on not being like is basically having a dj and having a an act, if that mm -hmm, makes sense. Mm -hmm. So even though we are an act, we're a duo, none of our stuff's rehearsed, yeah, except for us actually learning our lyrics. Yeah, oh, so yeah. when we get on a set, okay. when we get on a set, we don't know what's coming. We actually don't know what's coming. So you don't you, you don't rehash the same lyrics for the last show? You... We will. So we will sometimes. Right. We will quite often. But yeah. we don't know what bars are going to come, when they're going to come. It all just oh. depends on what tune comes yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. and sometimes, of course, we've, we've got lyrics that... So there's a ly there are lyrics that I'll spit, which will then inspire him to spit one of his because mm. we've written those lyrics together yeah. or stuff like that. So you've yeah. got, like, filing systems in your head. Kind just of. just, like, write that rap for that beat. Or it might just be... Yeah, yeah. It's more. Switching. It's more just literally. Oh, that tune bangs. That's just made this lyric pop into my head. I'm gonna spit. Yeah. Synchronicity, right? Between yeah, a couple. Pretty much. <laughs> I'm gonna get into this because there's gonna be people out there that are very curious, and I'm also kind of curious because, um, and, and just by the way that you guys are batting back and forth in this interview, mm. there, I, I understand there is no there is no preset kind of um, teachings of of uh, conduct in interviews, mm. but you guys are definitely like. You're you're so well versed in each other's company. <laughs> you you're, you're kind of just finishing off each other's sentences, <laughs> but but with enough for the other one to stop. You yeah, know? I mean, there's a lot of things going on here. When I was uh, in 2017, up until 2017, I was um, in a eight year relationship mm. with a girlfriend that I was working with in music. Mm. That shit isn't easy. No, mm. it's not. But any stretch of the imagination, otherwise I'd still be with her. <laughs> 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 Truth is, uh, you guys have gone the course. Mm. and you're still doing your thing. You guys have been together for a long time, and I know that long because time. we've chatted. Um, uh, what's the fucking secret? 
Well, just try not to kill each other, really. That's the main secret. We have our ups and downs, like any couple do, but it's about working through it, isn't it? Yeah. I'm trying to yeah. think of a funny answer here that won't get me strangled when I go home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kels, can you just edit that bit yeah. from there? <laughs> do you know what? There isn't a secret. Uh, to be honest, it, actually, if I'm honest, I think maybe the secret is our mutual love for what we do. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. that's the secret, yeah. I would mm. say, because we both have the same passion, the same drive, the same um, want to succeed in this thing. Mm. And I think that's what's kept us going. Because we've had some 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 hard times, man. Yeah. Um, We're a couple, innit? A long-standing couple. So, yeah. yeah. You know, and, um, like, I lost my, my dad 12 years ago. So that, that was early into our relationship. We've been together 15 years. Lost my dad after three years of being together. Yeah. And... Um, that obviously affected both of us really hard because we're we're the type of couple that basically since we got together, since the day we decided to get together, we've been to, together every yeah. day we since. We basically lived yeah, with yeah, each other yeah, from yeah, day yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> and we're not the type yeah. of couple where stars goes out like or has gone on holiday or we've been living separately or no, we've been together like every yeah. day and I've never had friends that have been around together fifteen years, so I've got loads of questions right now. <laughs> all right. So first of all, uh, is it true, like, about the... Is it the four to six to eight year thing where there's this bit where it's like, oh, God, I don't know what I'm itching now. I'm not sure we should be together anymore. Do you we've get, had, did, we've did had they, a couple of them over the years, yeah. yeah. We yeah. have had a couple of them Because there is these, the these moments, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Okay, my second bit is... Um, so with this idea that you're together all the time, mm-hmm. which is easily fucking done, mm-hmm. you may have all the greatest ideas of giving each other, you know, independence and still being, you know, given half the tar- chance and a bit of regularity, you were next things you in a pocket. Yeah. Like, like, do you ever think to yourself, yo, uh, do you ever think to yourself, this is too much? No, I mean, we, I think we, we have our periods where we're yeah. like, right, so for example, lockdown was a prime example of that, actually. So, of course... When we were in lockdown, we couldn't actually do anything, right? <laughs> so we were we realised, okay, yeah, we do like each other's company, but actually those few hours I might go to my mates or those few hours that he goes to his mates or whatever, yeah. They make a lot of difference. They make a lot of difference. Yeah. Um, and at one point through lockdown, I can't remember when it was, but at one point we were like, okay, so I'm in one room, he's in another room, his boy's in the other room, and we're not seeing each other all day. Yeah. So yeah, 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 it's yeah. like, hang on a minute, what's going on here? We're locking ourselves down in our mm. own houses and stuff. Then lockdown started easing a little bit and we kind of started, we were just doing our own thing. It wasn't so much we were, I was going off and having a week away or he was going off and doing something for a few mm. days, whatever. It was just right, well, I'm just popping out to go see my mate. Mm. You know, we just I'm just popping out. Mm. And you just pop out and it kind of made, you know, it it, it keeps us missing each other still yeah. because we, we're still going out and doing our thing. Yeah. Um, but being locked together like that made us realise that actually we're not in each other's pockets as much as we thought we were because if we were, then that would have been a breeze. <laughs> you guys rock. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, it, Is that music right? Conquers yeah, all. I mean, let me add to that. So there, there's, there's some times both of us have, um, we've kind of wanted to do normal couple things. Like, for example, go on a normal couple's holiday mm. or... Um, I'll just leave that as the example. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but we, we never find... Or, or, for example, like, fix up the house together as a couple or um, stuff like that. And we just find we never really have the time to do those couple things because the music keeps calling us, yeah? Mm. Like, yeah. And you know what? I think our best times are when we're just busy every day, every day, because mm. we're together going out doing it. Yeah. You know, some of the coolest things that we've done are when we do international gigs. Yeah. Mm. Because we've got each other, we travel with each other. Mm. Yeah, so it is a holiday in itself. We went to Iron Napa, did uh, Innovation in the Sun just a couple months ago, and uh, we were only there for two days, but you know what? We hadn't been away for ages. It was such a nice, short break. Mm. It was really short. So I thought of a good example we were just talking about the other day. So we're a music couple, mm-hmm. right? We've never actually been to a concert together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, of course... Hold we've on. Been to, <laughs> I know, right? Breaks. So, we've been to raves and we've been to festivals and we've done yeah. all those kinds of things, but actually go and buy some tickets to go and see an act that we both like. Yeah, yeah. When there's plenty of them. Yeah, yeah. Never done it. Normal <laughs> couples would just go, you know, yeah, a couple of tickets to James Blunt. Yeah, go on then. Yeah, exactly. You guys, you, you, what, you right. mean just like some regular date night shit? Yeah. 
We don't really yeah, do that because do really because when we when it's like date night time, it's like yeah. oh we got booking, oh we yeah. got radio, oh yeah. we got this, and that becomes that. your date night, and it is yeah. kind of yeah because we both enjoy ourselves. Comment below, yeah, get your tickets in, <laughs> get some donations going here. Not that they can't afford it, but because we've got to give them space and get them the days off they need. You assign the dates, people. <laughs> they on their command. Yeah, um, Otherwise, whatever tickets you want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, how influential is stars for you? Do you say? Uh, very. Um, words, I, I can't really put into words, to be honest. Um, I came from a uh, West Coast rap and drum and bass background. So first I was into my rap, then I was into my drum and bass. And I'm the type of person that is, I know what I like and I only like that. Mm. And I'm not open to suggestions. Yeah, <laughs> A bit arrogant like that, or at least I was. And then I met Stars and uh, like, so go back a little bit when I was 15 or so, had a friend, he was into his garage, I was into my drum bass and there was no, there was no uh, manoeuvring or there was, n I wasn't giving up basically. I was like, no, nah, I like drum and bass, your garage is mm. shit. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> but then I got with Stars and she came from garage, grime, sort of UKG background. Garage, Big up funky feet. <laughs> and uh, really inspired me. And then when it actually came to us writing some other genres of music, like uh, 140, Stars really helped me to be less structured than my normal drummer bass patterns and to be a little bit more skippy with it and stuff. And um, so that really helped me a lot. Um, just generally in life as a girlfriend as well, you mm. know, she's, she's very influential. She gives me a lot of advice. You know, she is a bit younger than me, but um, she gives me words of wisdom that, someone maybe even older than me couldn't give me mm -hmm. to be honest so yeah very influ influential that's so sick and 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 stars all about well upset. well where do i start i mean to be honest when i first met these mm. we weren't uh, i wasn't an mc really yeah i wasn't even an mc when no, i first met him no so we met at a rave in brixton in 2007 mm. Um, and yeah, I was just a little raver. I'd been raving a few years, thought I was a veteran, you know, mm. thought I knew the world. Mm -mm. And I wanted to go to this rave one night and um, none of my raving friends wanted to come. So I ended up calling one of my friends who wasn't into raving at all. Mm. She was like, I'll just, I'll come, why not? Mm. Went down there. Um, us being young, I was 16, mm -hmm. my mate was 18. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said, oh, who do you think's the hottest guy in the rave? Mm. And they're like, oh, I don't do that. I'm too mature for this kind of stuff, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She made me pick someone though. She's like, go on, you've got to pick someone, you've got to pick someone. And then literally, it was like a scene that's seen out of the movie, out of a movie. The, the crowd parted mm. and, and literally it was like one of the lights just hit this guy. And I was like, hmm, <laughs> who's he? He's good looking. Yo, so <laughs> the gods are <laughs> <Literally. calling> the... <laughs> And as I pointed to him, he's clocked me, pointing at him. So he's come over and he's all moody first. He's like, what are you pointing at me for? Yeah. <laughs> Some girl in Brixton just pointing at me. I'm like, I, I got it. this gal. Yeah, so I told him why I pointed at him. And he said, oh, well, you know, I'm an MC, you know, like, I'm MC in the, like, in the other room if you want to come see me in a bit. So he went to go see his set, watched his set. I was Course. dancing around the rave like a nutter because I was an absolute nutcase back yeah, then. Not, yeah. I'm still not crazy, but anyway, <laughs> that's another story. <laughs> um... And then uh, we went outside, went outside for a smoke, had a chat, swapped my spaces. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know the era. And um, yeah, then a few months down the line, one of my good friends at the time, uh, one of my mates I'd met from Raving, Big Up Blazer, um, she was an MC. Hmm. And she used to, we used to go out, get a bit messy, and she'd come back to mine afterwards and she would just spit bars at me for like hours and it was great. <laughs> yeah. was, yeah. I used to love it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Especially like, you know, when I'm like 15 years old, I'm like, oh my God, I've got this MC in my house, yeah, MC yeah. it to me, like, this is great. And he's a mate, you know. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, and then, yeah, as I say, a few months after meeting Deezer, I'd, uh, I decided I'm just going to try and write a lyric because I've been so going sick. out with her loads, I've yeah. going out with my mate loads, and um, I thought, yeah, I'm just going to write a lyric. Hmm. So I wrote a lyric, um, ended up, Spitting that lyric to her at another rave. She then dragged me off to go and spit it to Harry Shotter, uh, which was oh, a bit mad. Harry, Shorter. my guy. Um, and he was like, yeah, do you know what? You're sick. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, from there, I decided, you know what? I'm going to keep doing this. So I started, I carried on writing. And then Dee's brought me on, on my first radio show. Wow. And so, oh, sorry, I forgot to mention as well that when I met him, that night I met him, he gave me a CD. And I became obsessed with that CD, like, for months and months and months. I was literally played it every single day. I know it word for word. I still know it word it for word. It was our biggest CD to date. We had Funster on it. It yeah. was my boys, yeah. Addict and Remedy on the decks, me and Kid on the mic, and Funster was the special guest. And I absolutely rinsed that CD. So not only was I like, oh, my God, this guy is cute. I was like, oh, my God, he can spit. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And, um... 
So yeah, so from from the very beginning, yeah. um, this has always been a part of my my music career from mm-hmm. the very very start. He gave me my first radio show. Um, he gave me my first booking as well. Um, and of course, where we've built ourselves up and where we are, wh- where we have got to, where we've got to now, we where we bounce off each other so much. Like I don't. It's weird. I, I can do things by myself, but mm-hmm. I couldn't imagine doing mm-hmm. things without him mm-hmm. because. You know, there are times when I'm stuck on things. I'll be writing a lyric and I'm stuck on it. And then he'll actually just write something. And I, we go, right, let's make a combo bar out of this. And mm. it's... God, that's good. So it's, yeah, there's <laughs> a lot of... You're not entertained, but you're not inspired <laughs> by this shit. <laughs> um, I, I'll say this much, though, Stars. And this is something that I witnessed firsthand. And I'm sure these will testify to this as being fairly frequent. Um, girls in the crowd, they, they almost... I watched it carefully. They almost look upon you as almost like role model esque, especially for the younger girls that are in the audience. That it's like to see um, a female, and you know, in in twenty twenty two, this isn't the norm. You know, yeah. this, is, this is this is kind of a regular thing now. Like girls are DJs now a yeah. lot more than they were ten years ago, yeah, definitely. and things like this. So it's not it's not a new thing, I think. But what it is though is that you you've got an approachability. Or at least a star attraction on stage, which um, there's a level of humility, I think. I think there's a level of humility to what you you bring on stage. Mm. You know, you are who you are. And actually, you say things the way they are. Yeah. Um, Thank you. And yeah. And I and I kind of I kind of think for a, a, a girl or a lady that might be on, on the floor watching, you feel a level of empowerment mm. towards you. You know what I'm well, saying? One of the things I've always, always tried to do is just be myself. Yeah. And that was one of the reasons I actually got into drum and bass. So my mum was a garage DJ. So I grew up around house and garage. And I mean, my mum even took me to a few little bit gigs that she'd mm-hmm. done, yeah. So I actually saw what the house and garage scene was like. Yeah. And it was very, you know, don't get me wrong, like I love garage with my heart, but the actual rave scene itself is very prim and proper. Everybody's dressing this way, you've got to dress this way, and you've got to look that way, and you've got to do this and do mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. And so then when I discovered John and Bass, and I was like, hang on a minute, what, you can just go raving in a tracksuit? Huh? What? <laughs> yeah, like, what? Hang on a minute, what, like, that person was at a rave last night and they didn't go home and shower and came to this rave, like, mm. and that's okay. Mm-hmm. Not that I would do that, but do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It was that, ah, oh, so there's this whole lax, you can just do what you want. Mm. So I spent the first three years in John and Bass just being a raver. Mm. So then when I became an MC, I was like, well, I don't want to stop being a raver. I'm not going to stop being who I am. This is who I am. This is what mm. I love doing. Mm. So I'm not going to stop doing that. And I think it's very easy when you get to a certain point in this music game, like to go, oh, no, I can't do that anymore. I can't do this anymore. I can't rave in the crowd mm. anymore. I can't talk to too many people anymore. I can't do this. I can't do that mm. because you have that status. Mm. And you have certain people in the scene that will turn around and say, yeah, you know, when you get to this level, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do this. And I'm there like, but that's what I want to do. My yeah. heart tells me I want to I want to stand on that stage and I want to dance and I want to point at that raver and I want to sing this song with them and I want to sing bars about this raver and I want to do this. You know, mm. that's what I want to do and why on earth would you take that power of being an artist and being able to express that and then just completely change who you are? It doesn't make sense. That's so sick. Yeah, you're right as well because people just, they just do that and maybe that is the relationship that you hold that's so, so unique. Both of you, in fact, you know what I mean? Like, mm. that you hold so unique is that you... You're at one with the crowd because you could just as well be in the crowd. Yeah, yeah. yeah I tell quite you what, happily. Um, <clears throat> we've we've spoke about it before. Sometimes we say this good because we we effectively have the whole package where um, you know I can appeal to the ladies, stars can appeal to the men, mm. and vice versa. And vice versa. Mm. But do you know what? It's quite funny. Yeah, going back to what you say about stars is very approachable. Stars is a bit like a, a beacon. Yeah, <laughs> where, where everybody is just drawn to her. Of nutters yeah. as, well as, as well as normal human, yes. you know, So, f- funnily enough, <laughs> sometimes it could almost be said, I mean, Stars is so approachable, quite often in raves, people end up telling her their whole life story. Oh, yeah, I've been I've an agony on. And you're getting the, the MC spitting in your ear for the night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but then also, um, you know, going back to what I said about I can appeal to the ladies, Stars can appeal to the men. But quite... Commonly, actually, nowadays, um, oh, some girls will approach me after after our set, and they'll be like, you know, oh, is that your is that your girlfriend? Or they'll go up to stars and say, is that your is that your boyfriend? You know, maybe they're a little bit interested or whatever. But then also nowadays, we get a lot of girls that are quite interested in stars as well. Actually, like in that way, you know, because. <laughs> 
you know, shout out all the gay community. Yeah. Yo. But yeah, so actually there's not so many men that are coming up to us after this set. It seems to all just be ladies flooding up. Well, you say that though. But so, past... so wait a minute, I haven't finished yet. Wait a minute, <laughs> this is just getting spicy. Right, so what do you get? I was going to make it more spicy though. Cool. Right? I, 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 please indulge. Past few times we've been out, you've had guys come up to you and be like, Hey, look at your oh, eyes. Oh, it's happened a couple look times. Look at your eyes. <laughs> yeah. Googling over your eyes. To be so. fair, it's happened a couple times, yeah. To the point it's made me a little bit uncomfortable <laughs> just because I, I like I feel like putting my sunglasses back on because... What we but all it's, want to it's, know... It's invasive, though. It's like... Your like, eyes are amazing. <laughs> His eyes are amazing. <laughs> they are, but like... like come here. Like, yeah, but coming. like when you've got a guy in your face, like... <laughs> it's a bit scary. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay, uh, listen, this, everyone wants to know this now. So, what have you had offers of like naughty play? Like, have you had, like, you know. Not, no, nah, not that deep. Yeah, oh, I haven't. I don't know if you have. There, yeah, <laughs> I've, I've told you there's been a couple of girls that have just said in, in passing, like, oh, I'd love to shag both of you. Really? <laughs> yeah. well, I've you never should... heard that. Yeah, yeah, it's no. happened. It has no, happened. I don't, I've never taken it as that serious, and it would never be something that we'd contemplate anyway, but. Yeah, there's been the odd comments. Had a few marriage thing. proposals. Really? Yeah. Mm. Yes. <laughs> you wouldn't you? It'd be a flannel a day in the life of stars and teasers. You know what I mean? Like all these kind of scenarios that you're faced with. We love it though, man. Yeah. It's just this is what we do, and we we love. Uh, it's not just the music that we love, but it's actually doing this thing as well. You know mm. the. The getting ready, the going out, the performing. No, I don't like getting okay, ready. Okay, sorry, the getting ready. This is a guy right. saying he mm. likes getting ready. Yeah, big up all my girls out there, especially mm. my Afro girls. You know you know it's long. Yeah, I mean, I have a wash, <laughs> have a shave, I put a hat on, I put a T-shirt on, and I'm like, yo, babe, I'm good to go. <laughs> the way Here I am three hours be. later. <laughs> yeah. Say this. Bliss. My domestic <laughs> front of the stars. These. Okay, quick fire questions, okay? Right, favourite MC stars. Oh, you can't give me that question. Yeah, what genre? Go. Come on, go. any genre. Any genre. Ugh, I don't know, man. You can't give me that question. All right. <laughs> you can straight on to you. I'll stick with uh, drum and bass, Skibbity. Skibbity. He is the greatest of all time, so can't can't even contemplate someone else. All right, a favourite DJ. Stars. <laughs> <laughs> you really... You aren't getting the rhythm of this, eh? All right, favourite DJ, drum and bass, ego tripping. Nice. Oh, I was going to say the same one. Okay, all right. Uh, favourite uh, wares, fashion wares, stars? Uh, ghetto AF. Really? Like, T-shirts, pack suit bottoms, mm -hmm. yeah, comfy. Okay. okay. I mean, favourite, if it's not stars and Deezer, then it's probably uh, Nike. It's Nike. my most common, yeah. yeah. Uh, favourite rave? At the moment, breaking science. Breaking science. Ooh. Yeah. At the moment, breaking. Oh, go on. Um, do you know, just to give a different answer from you, I'd say Boombox Circus up in Leeds. We love doing yeah, that. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that, yeah, 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 that, yeah, that was banging. Yeah, that was banging. Yeah, We've been up there a few times, and every time it's good. Banging as well. Yeah. So if you would ever be on stage with anybody, alive or dead, who would it be, stars? Bob Marley. Bob Marley. Yeah. Right. Deezer. Uh, Cypress Hill, Be Real. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's reasonably yeah. doable, isn't or it? Or DMX. Yeah. <coughs> I could go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you are, really are a hip-hop head, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I grew up on that, man. It's proper hip-hop head. Mm. Part of the DNA, isn't it? Like, you know, Yeah. a lot of it is like what you grow up with. And if yeah. It's, yeah. If it's around Coolio you. was a big part for me. R.I.P. He just yeah. passed away Coolio, recently. Of course, of course, you know. Yeah. And it keeps on keeping on. And the machine keeps on turning and yeah. the stars keep on getting produced. And you guys are on to shit, man. <laughs> I'm so we pleased you came you. down, man. <laughs> no, thank you, bro. Legendary, it's, been, it's been a pleasure to come. As I said yeah. to you previously, I saw a couple of your podcasts. More recently, the one with Kenny Ken. And big up Kenny, that's our G. Yeah, tight, Kenny. And... Um, so, yeah, it was a real blessing when you said about us coming up here. So, yeah, thank you, man. Oh, man. Yeah. Thank you guys both so much for passing through. Unique Love. situation, having some two dons inside the place. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Killer Podcast out like it was out of fashion, stars and Jeez. diesel. That's it. You don't know now, you know, right? Tell a friend to tell a friend. We're not doing this for our health. We're doing it for the education purposes of street culture and beyond, all right? <laughs> Crime don't pay, but neither do they. Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. Stay lucky, people. Nice one, guys. Love. Peace. 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 Woo! Yo. Yo.